Okay, I am back. And actually, I am just back. It's just a minute later, or, you know, a few seconds later than the last video, which you probably seen yesterday, probably. Uh, my name is Keith, otherwise known as Ufgood, and I am building a 2D point-and-click adventure game using Armory 3D and Blender. Um, and I have some advantages for using 3D, 2D for 3D and all this stuff. 3D for 2D, whatever. Um, so, as I was saying the last time, um, my original plan was having you play all the characters. I know it sounds crazy. It, it is crazy, actually. Um, the good thing is, is I don't, I'm not beholding to, like, a producer or, you know, um, you know, where I have to take the, the, the safe way out. You know, everybody's talking about this experimental stuff you can do, and these people are making these weird experimental indie games that sometimes they're not even games necessarily, and they're, you know, they have odd stuff and whatever. And, uh, you know, exploring what it means to be a game, blah, 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 blah. Um, so, uh, but I choose to do the thing that n they would never do, which is let you play all the characters. Partly because it's ex super expensive and it takes a lot of time. Now, time is something I kind of have. I kind of don't have, but I kind of have. Um, since I don't really work, I uh, I do MTurk, so you know I pay for my internet. My dad isn't going to be here always, right? And I'm getting older, and um, so this might not work out. So um, as long as he's living, as long as you know, I don't have to go out and get a paying job to in order to live um i'm able to do this so i might be it might be a year it might be less than a year it might be five years it might be 10 years it could be longer um so i'm not going to act like i have a ton of time but at the same time i i can do my thing without much pressure of a time pressure that's partly the why i'm doing this vlogs because um if this gets popular enough and I can make some money off of the videos, uh, off the process, um, it makes it better. It means that I'm not trying to squeeze every last, you know, I'm not trying to uh, be as fast as possible and trying to maximize my income or whatever. I'm just simply making a game that I want to make. And uh, if people like watching what I'm showing, which probably unlikely right at the start because I'm doing a lot of talking um, then it's it's great I don't have the pressure and uh, because I don't have the pressure of uh, of a deadline uh, I can pretty much do kind of like what I want as far as the money thing is concerned um, you know I can't pay for people to do something for me so it's just gonna have to take the time that it takes and um, but I don't have to pay anybody right now that's the the good thing the the bad thing is i can't pay anybody because i don't have any money and otherwise it would be faster and maybe even better potentially the end result will be better um but the good part about not having money is i can't pay anybody and um i don't have a you know i don't have a thing i can just you know do it myself so and then later on if i make any money if 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 I don't make any money off of this, then you know no harm no foul. Um, maybe uh, even if I don't make money from you know like Patreon, like watching my videos and stuff, um, maybe I'll make some money off the game itself if it's good enough. Um, but if I do start make start making some money, I might start thinking about actually hiring like artists and composers and all that stuff, and, and to make it nice and professional and uh, really uh, really cool. But in the meantime, I got to do everything myself, but that's also a good thing. So the bad thing is doing everything myself. I'm not very good at, at any one thing, but um, uh, doing everything myself, I can switch off into different deals if I get bored, if I get stuck or whatever. And, and anyways, I wasn't going to go off on, you know, why I'm doing this because I, I already kind of did that in the other videos. So... Um, just a brief rundown of a few of the characters we have uh we have a dwarf that's searching for his dad um he's uh he, well he's a he's half dwarf half giant so that makes him a really tall 
almost human looking, but he's his his uh, dad was a was a giant and his mom was a dwarf. So and I don't know how that worked, but they produced a son and um, that's that's what happens with that. So so um, Roland, the the dwarf, um, the half dwarf, what do you want to call him? Uh, basically has the mind of a child, even though he's, he's as big as an adult. Um, so there, there's part of that. In fact, um, it plays into, at least in my other story, it plays into the, um, the machine that Max wants to build. He's going to build a machine that's going to open this huge portal that allows armies to march through to conquer all the realms. Um, so remember when I said that I wanted something that this has got to be bigger than what he did the last time and uh um i just realized that what he did the last time was trying to take over enchanted lands he was thinking he would get uh, gain control of everything through that but now he's got it's slightly slightly adjusted now he doesn't want to just take over enchanted lands he wants to take over all the realms um even though it's more ambitious it's uh he in his mind it's a better plan because like I said, he's got all everything kind of covered. He's got his bases covered, so to speak. Um, so we have Roland, the the oversized dwarf, um, and uh, eventually you'll find out that his his uh, dad, the giant, is is enslaved to work on this machine because it's a huge machine and he's a giant, um, along with other things. Um, we have we have Princess Karen, who's from Verdance, which um, it said that they can actually imbue non-magicals with magic uh, ability um, without the use of Quicksilver. So um, Max definitely wants his hands on her. In fact, in the opening scene, uh, basically Barty ends up kidnapping her. And uh, our character from our realm, who's right now is named John Thomas, John, um, after he steps through the portal, because... Uh, uh, Henry had given him a, a silver ticket to get, you know, it's a quick silver ticket to get into Enchanted Lands. And so when he steps through the portal, he, he manages to step onto a train. Um, and uh, when you look out, the train is actually flying. And uh, <coughs> um, basically, um, Barty gets onto, either he gets onto the train or he's already on it. I don't remember how I wrote it. But he jumps on there. Um, he jumps, uh, he goes up to where, where Karen is sitting in the train, and then he sprinkles some, like, fairy dust kind of stuff. Uh, I haven't really decided what I'm going to do about that, but some fairy dust on her, and she, she falls asleep, and so he heaves her over his shoulder, even though he's this, like, this little guy, and then, uh, he jumps, uh, he jumps out of the train, and then that's when we find out that the train is actually in the air and flying. And um, he managed to put this little device on on the side uh, of on the inside of the train that makes the train start spinning out of control. And um, um, there's a crash, and then John John wakes up, and um, he's in this kind of uh, this forest that's it looks like winter, but it's it's there's a warm breeze, and um, there's more to it. Um, so I, I don't want to get too far into that. Um, now Princess Karen, I, regardless of what anybody says, she's an old fashioned kind of princess, damsel in distress. I don't have a problem with that. People have a problem with that. Uh, don't play the game. At the same time, I don't like any of my characters not doing anything. In fact, you get to play her and, uh, she actually helps in the aid of her own, uh, rescue. But that's just because I, I... Uh, I like things. I don't like stuff to happen to people necessarily, where they just kind of sit around, not doing anything. Um, so we got her. We got. Um, I already told you about Henry. He's got half of his magic. Literally, that's what happens. Half things. So he doesn't really want to use magic very much. Um, so he brings in um, John from our our realm, and then um, and John's a typical. Um, I don't know if he's typical anything. He's like me, which is stays at home and doesn't have any friends or anything. So um, he, it's kind of like that. 
and um, his his life is pretty boring, and um, he's raised by his mom, or he thinks it's his mom. Oh, pardon me. The woman that raised him, he thinks is his mom. <clears throat> Actually, it turns out that she is his. Well, how did I do that? How did I say that? Is it his mom? Maybe it's his actual mom, and it turns out that that uh, she pretends to be his, like his aunt or something. I forget. I had a I had a deal, and um, uh, uh, maybe I'll get back to that. It doesn't matter. Anyways, so we have that. We have a, a cowardly werewolf. Um, this guy named Kurt, who was uh, sort of like Beauty and the Beast, where he was uh, he was cursed. Uh, he's a coward. And so he was cursed uh, by turning in, in, into a werewolf, and uh, but he's a, he's a coward. He's like a total coward. But uh, later on, we'll find out he kind of finds his courage, and um, it actually him being uh, outside the the regular um, the the werewolves they they don't like him very much because he's a coward, and they're not. And um, we have. Uh, Let's see who else is good. We have Sir William the Unicorn, and actually, the um, uh, who was I just talking about? This is like forgetting half of my stuff here. Um, the Cowardly Werewolf. He wasn't. Uh, he was not enchanted like Beauty and the Beast. The Beauty and the Beast one is like. Um, and I just say it because it's it's the the idea about the story is similar, not because uh, uh, it's Beauty and the Beast. But um, Sir William was a knight who uh, was really egotistical and thought he was better than everybody else, and he did something and it caused a witch to bewitch him, and now he is a unicorn, and he's actually the last unicorn in in that in in Enchanted Lands, because. Uh, it, uh, the unicorns were hunted uh, by the Black Knight, who likes to eat unicorn meat. And uh, Sir William, uh, Sir William actually plays into it. Uh, eventually, you'll find a way of, of reversing the spell or whatever. Um, I can't think of. I have a dragon in there. I actually have two dragons. One's a bad, and one's a good. And uh, I, I forget. I forget what I wrote for them. Oh, and then there's uh, Zanzibar, Zanzibar the Great, and Zanzibar is actually from our realm also, but Zanzibar um, was a magician and wasn't a very good one, but the one thing that he did do was uh, he, he divulged the magician's secrets, right? He broke the magician's code, and so um, he sneaks into a, um, into another, like into a convention that's full of, um, what he thinks are other magicians that don't know him, and um, you find he finds out that they're actually they're actually um, wizards that um, came and had a convention in our world. Partly because we got you know all kinds of comic conventions and we got all this all this goofy stuff, and so the wiz the real wizards thought they were they would fit right in. So um, he actually escapes. Um, from the magicians of our world for breaking the code and uh, manages to get in and so then he pretends to be a, a a real wizard in Enchanted Lands and at one point he tries to uh, he tries to swindle Max and but Max catches him because he's really he's that good but uh, Max instead of uh, you know instead of uh, casting some evil spell on him or you know killing him or whatever he decides to use them because uh, he liked kind of liked the style and liked that he had the guts to go up and try to con Max, and uh, so he, he he's actually a bad guy. He's not a good guy. So I was telling you the good guys. I'm not sure if I told you all the good guys. Oh yeah, I, I have a a character called uh, Count Roy, and he is a, a vampire. Um, but vampires in Enchanted Lands. Uh, actually from his world um, they're not really evil and um, uh, they uh, 
people think they drink blood, but really it's actually this this uh, berry called the blood berry. It's like so red and thick, it looks like blood. And so people, for generations, have mistaken vampires for drinking blood, and they don't do that. But he does bite people, and uh, to to get his wife um, before he, he he can get married, um, he has to bite he has to bite a woman on the neck, and uh, he has to uh, um, in order to to he makes her immortal, kind of like vampires, and you know our stories right they bite them and then they become vampires and that's that's kind of the way it works with Roy but Roy is not a bad guy and he doesn't actually drink blood but uh, he runs this motel like out in the sticks um, in fact in the game it will be probably the only hotel you can visit probably um, you might be well there's, there's gonna be one um, main hotel but um, as sort of a base of operation because he turns out to be a, a kind of a nice guy and uh um the bats the bats in the belfry motel that nobody ever goes to because they're all scared you know because of the way it looks and he's a he's a vampire and all this stuff but uh we get to know him and he's a pretty good guy um then um i guess i'm running out of time here and i'm doing a lot of talking again and I know I should be doing instead of talking, but we're going to do a little bit more talking. In fact, I'm going to be doing a lot of talking in here, so you're going to have to just forgive me for the, for not, like, doing stuff. At least at least the start, you know. Once I get going, um, once I actually get working on the game, it'll be a lot less talking and a lot more doing. And um, I'm, I'm hoping to do that really soon. So I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about it in the next time. I'll tell you a little bit about the bad guys in the next, um, the next video.